for those I learned of how to one hit clap. Oh, oh when I was in like sixth grade. Because remember that show on that MTV Nitro Circus? I no, don't. what is that? Hang on, it was like the cool guy show where they like rode. Oh, in that case, I totally know it. I totally know the cool, cool guy, guy show. show. Sorry, sorry, I totally know it. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, it's like a show about the cool guys. The, cool guy. the people yeah. that were the cool guys, the people that watched it were not the cool guys. You know? Yeah, they, they had leather jackets, and you just from watching it, you got a leather jacket too because you were cool. That's how it was. It was Grease. It was Grease. The... <laughs> I yeah, remember the movie Grease. It, it actually was Grease. <laughs> I remember when I was eight years old, I was like seven or eight years old. That's when I first saw Grease, and I really wanted a leather jacket. So I was like, oh, I want to look like that. And then I got the closest thing was like, a denim jacket, but with a sort of a leather collar. That was the closest I got. And it it didn't look good at all. Denim that's, that's and leather? Cool. Denim and leather. I have to say, I that do sounds... think that's kind of cool. I think it you mean... could rock it now. Probably Maybe. More, probably more Maybe. now than when you were seven. Yeah, it was just, it was very baggy and oversized. So like the sleeves were like hanging off my hands. It was like... It was kind of cute, but it it wasn't. It didn't have, have the desired effect that I was looking. What for. you were saying was that it was an adult jacket, and you were a child. <laughs> what that's what you were saying. <laughs> you were a muppet wearing that jacket. Yeah, who knew that uh, clothes don't look good if they don't fit? It's yeah. <laughs> that's in now. That's it. That's oh, in. Oh, oversized. That is it. Yeah, I was ahead of my time. Well, welcome like everyone to our ahead of our time to- podcast. <laughs> With, no! uh, two with meerkats, with with Luke, with Lucas Arnold and Gabby, Gabby Jordan, Jordan Brown. Brown, and our guest today, who's drinking wine and a beer, and whose example I have decided to follow with both. Yes, the two genders, and his name is Zach Kandashi. Woo! Those are the two genders, Zach and Kandashi. Yep, yep. The whole I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm 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 on now. I'm on. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. You're Welcome doing great. to the pod. Very funny comedian. No, we've never met. Lucas and him have met. They appear to be good friends. Uh, yeah. but I watched his set recently and I loved it. He's very funny. Um but you know, maybe one day I'll be better friends with you than lucas is so you better think, watch out lucas I think it's entirely likely considering i like low-key fucking hate lucas so like i mean what do you me hate too. about me let's go into detail let's <laughs> let's do this self-hatred like, corner <laughs> yeah it's like why are you why are you so good at the things you do it pisses me off it's like, <laughs> like stop being good at things stop <laughs> stop having a real job you know <laughs> Yeah, I hate that about him too. I also don't like that he's handsome. It's just kind of pisses me off. Oh, like, I disagree. Oh, really? You do like that he's <laughs> handsome, or that you don't think he's handsome? <laughs> I'll let you just think, think about that. <laughs> no, no. So you either handsome. like that I'm handsome, or you think that I'm not handsome. I. The two genders. I, I think I want to kiss you, but I don't know why. You know. Mm. That's it, okay. Because you're handsome, That's, that... or. Because you're ugly. I don't, That's a respectable that. urge. I respect that. I don't know. I'll just kiss you, Lucas. You know that. Yeah, I would kiss you too. I think you two should kiss. It's a shame we're not in person right now. I um, know. Because I would totally watch. I mean, I would do it. I don't think Lucas yeah. would. Wait, okay, no, but realistically now, how would you kiss me? What how would you how would you hold me? Is what I mean. You know, what would I mean honestly, you... I'd probably go like my right hand by like a little like it's like on your neck and like my fingers on like the back of your like the back part of your head so like that this is amazing this yeah. is and the then method for anyone open, who wants like, like kissing technique this is good like open mouth and then okay. like put your bottom lip in between my lips <laughs> well i knew like people that. jerked off to this podcast before <laughs> but now <laughs> it's even more likely <laughs> As someone jerked off on your podcast. <laughs> that was Lucas. He pulled a Jeffrey tube in this one time and we were like, oh my god, I was my thinking, god, I was stop. like, what's the name of the dude? It's, Je- it's Tubin. It's, it's Tubin. Yeah, yeah, you got it. 
you know what we have not talked about and we're very late and we should have talked about it last week but last week was the chaos episode is hilaria baldwin we have not talked about her yes oh my god i totally know who she is (laughs) (laughs) well you're gonna like this then wait zach who do you who do you think she is yeah wait now i'm curious (laughs) yeah what if he was like a diplomat (laughs) i i couldn't even tell you wow i'm getting i just thought of hillary clinton alex baldwin like together Alex Baldwin. Alex Baldwin. <laughs> Alex, Alex. I know that. I know that. Tell Lauren. <laughs> He's going to get her ass. Well, then you're really going to like this. Okay. I can't believe yeah. I can explain this to someone. This is so exciting. This so is adorable. You were right on the first part. Hilaria Baldwin is Alec Baldwin's wife. Yes. Um, they have five children together. She's a yeah. super mom. She looks great. She's very beautiful. Um, she's a yoga teacher she actually used to teach yoga to my dad but that's a different story whoa yeah okay (laughs) it's wild but yeah um she got in a feud on instagram with amy schumer because amy schumer like made fun of uh skinny pregnant women and hilaria Mm -hmm. in all of her glory was like well i am a pregnant woman and i am very skinny so what do you want to do about it now the Mm -hmm. catch is hilaria pretends to have an accent she's been claiming she's from Mallorca, spain for the past 10 years mm. as it turns oh, out and if i if i could yeah. interject forgive please me for interject, interrupting please. but there is there is a clip of her I, I guess it's on like a morning show or something you know where like some of these people come in to like do just like one recipe and um there's a bit where she goes on uh how, how do you say in english a cucumber cucumber yes like she there is a clip of her like saying, I don't know the word for cucumber. Yeah. Um, and now Gabby, take it away as to what. She pretends to forget is. what a cucumber is. People from her past has have been coming out from the woodwork. No one's canceling her. No one's saying anything mean about her. But they are like, look, her name is not Hilaria. It's Hillary. She's not from Mallorca, Spain. She's from Massachusetts, Boston. And she's white and she doesn't have an accent. And she's been faking it for 10 years. <laughs> like, honestly respect for the commitment you know you meet alec baldwin you're like okay like i gotta i gotta <laughs> show up i gotta do something and like she stuck with it honestly that's respect i i think that's a good thing and then anything it's like on uh on the bachelor that one season where that girl pretends to colton that she has an australian accent and she doesn't. And off camera, she's like, well, you have to do anything you can to stand out. Hmm. But she fakes an accent around him the whole time and around the girls. She's got an American accent. Here's here's what I wonder is that I wonder if she maybe got caught in a lie to save face. Like, have you ever have you ever done a thing like at a at a party where you didn't hear some what someone said and you pretended that you oh sorry i i slightly bad hearing in this ear or something or you just or some some little thing to just diffuse the tension Mm -hmm. um away from either party i'm wondering if she maybe did something like that and then it just snowballed into a huge ball of lies essentially so she pretended at a party like oh i am from mallorca spain and well alec and alex like oh i love your (laughs) accent and then she's like fuck like that's all I have. Or maybe someone who is Spanish, like uh, like called her Ilaria, and she was like, "Oh, I kind of like the sound of that." Or and no, but she didn't correct that person, and then everyone around was like, "Oh, your name is Hilaria," and she's like, "Yeah," and like, no, she said, "See, see, see, mi nombre es Hilaria, y yo tengo acento." La biblioteca. El gato. La biblioteca, por favor. <laughs> oh, oh, poor woman. Poor thing. Poor thing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even feel like I don't feel bad for her, but I don't. I I, I just I just respect her. You know, that's yeah. what I, I think. Just for true. committing to the fact. Just for committing to the bit. Committing to the bit always gets my respect. Like no yeah. matter what the bit is. Um, do you wait? There... Do you? Yeah. Do you have a? Do you think? What do you think you could fool people into thinking? I was going to ask the same thing. Yeah. That I'm gay, for sure. That you're gay? I mean, mm. did you see how the first conversation just went like three minutes ago? Like, It, it flowed very naturally. I felt I was in the I'm moment. Really, I was I'm there. really good at it. 
Yeah, you totally <laughs> fooled everyone when you were like, I want to kiss Lucas so bad and tenderly touch him. Like, I oh was my so God, who doesn't? Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, I get the sarcasm. I, I, I'm sorry, you know. I simply no. mean that if you love him, you should just confess, and that's fine because I love him too. No, I don't love him. I just want to make out with him. <laughs> A quick fuck. So he's your <laughs> unfuck Mary Kill. If you were playing the game Fuck Mary Kill, he's your fuck. He's not your Mary. No, he'd be my Mary for sure. Okay. Oh. I don't know. Something about you just just screams stability. You know? Lucas totally screams stability. What would I be? Oh, would I be more of a fuck or a Mary based on just what meeting me for the past 10 minutes? Oh, this is good. You can offend me. It's fine. <laughs> no, no. I'm like, I need to, I'm trying to analyze everything. I feel like you'd be a Mary. Mm. Oh. I can see that. Lucas, what do you think? Oh yeah. You're, you're a Mary. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. You made me feel very comfortable, very easily, very off yeah. the bat. Aww. You're the whole package, Gabby. You're the whole package. Well, that's nice. Zach, for yeah. the record, I think you're a fuck, but maybe yeah, you could be sure. a Mary. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I'm sorry, Zach. You're you're a fuck. Yeah, no, I know what I am. Like, but you're not I, a kill. No. Oh, no, no, no. I would never kill you. No, no. Um, I, You're too pure of heart, but you are a fuck. I'm definitely a fuck, dude. No ifs, ands, or buts. Like, one of my, uh, one of my that friends. Hat. Yeah, I know. That's a it's fuck Jean. hat. It's Gene. That's a fuck hat. <laughs> We ever but sold is, merch? We should have one hair. that just says yeah. "fuck hat." <laughs> <laughs> this is my fuck hat. No, but um, one of my uh, one of my good friends now, who I had like a I had like a thing with, beef mm -hmm. like when I first moved to New York for like for a few months, and now we're like good friends. But she told me she said she saw like a tweet where like this girl is talking about how she's like a foster girlfriend, and how like guys come and will like. She'll be their like girlfriend for like a little bit, and then they marry like the next person. <laughs> That's exactly what I am, because like every person I've been with has like found their significant other for like life almost. <laughs> like wow, oh, like, after... has anyone gotten married? Um, not yet, but like everyone, like because I'm like good friends with a lot of the people I used to like talk to, and they're like, mm. they're like, yeah, the guy now, like he's literally the best and i like see it and it's like genuine and i'm like i'm so happy for you guys like oh do, do you have the like, thing where they look like you because that i think is common the exit where the nah, the the next nah. people look oh interesting nah without like, without being too disparaging like what do these people tend to look like are they like yeah they're better height, they're worse, body types yeah. yeah anything um i think just just different i thought they were both very handsome people mm -hmm. just into okay. different like into different things like and like i felt like we're just more like like fit for they like fit well like with the other person like i it was mm. i was like oh yeah this is totally like your person like oh my god like mm. totally like, fair like, enough like, like yeah. you're welcome you're welcome for me breaking up with you you know like <laughs> So that leads nicely into the next question, which is you want a celebrity girlfriend. Yes. So wait, can I, can I, I wanted, I want to tell this from like my point of view from like, Please. just at least introduce. So I was just like sitting on my couch. I was just, and then I got like an Instagram video call just from Zach. I was like, and it had been like a, a, at least a couple of weeks. No, actually I saw you. Um, on we like did a like group a group chat. Zoom call, but I've I had never like contacted you besides like get, no, like, yeah, you would never contacted me directly on your on your Instagram post. I did I did contact you directly beforehand to say that I found your set and I really liked it. Yes, so, you did. So I did it. But besides that, we hadn't had any like really like just one on one contact. And so he just called me, and he's well, you're at home still, right? Yeah. And so it was him at home with his little sister, who's very lovely. And he was like, Lucas, uh, we need your help. I was like, what? And he said, <laughs> um, <laughs> he's like, I need a famous girlfriend. And in order to get on Raya, the dating app, you need to have a recommendation from someone who's already on Raya, who's famous, who can recommend you. And so he's like, let's both get on Raya and find famous girlfriends. And... <laughs> And I, I immediately started laughing. It was adorable. Um, and then I was like, okay, number one, I'm not in the market and I'm not about to get on a dating app. But even, let's say I was and I, and I was trying to get on Raya, 
I don't know anyone who's on Raya. Now, let's say I did. I'm definitely not close enough with them to ask for a recommendation. And if I got on, you definitely no. couldn't get on. No, but here's the thing. You're going to, I think you'd be able to get on because, okay. first of all, I think a lot of the, it's like not necessarily like crazy big celebrities. It's more of like influencers and like yes. other like TikTok famous people and things like that. But in my have, mind, it was like movie stars, musicians, fucking. No, yeah. It's no, once it's in a like, blue moon from what I've heard. I had a friend who was on it for a while and she was like basically saying that like once in a blue moon, she would see an actually famous person. And for the most part, it's just like directors or influencers or just people who like you wouldn't necessarily know by name, hmm. but who for whatever reason have the prestige. Yeah, to like the expectation huh. of like, I would feel like, I feel like I was, I think I was saying this is how like, Freddie from iCarly would be on it. <laughs> you know, like just like real random out of the way. Well, so we all know my stance on iCarly, which is that I would fuck Sam, <laughs> the Thank one you. who was like a stone butch. Yeah, no, both of us. Dude, yeah, we'll compete yeah. for her heart. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I love that show. That's a great show. Underrated. Dan Schneider, kind of gross, you know, but like <laughs> makes produce great shows. Maybe Dan Schneider will notice me if I do this. For those not aware, I'm putting my foot in front of the camera. Yeah, oh, that's your foot. That. I thought that was I thought that was your your calf. He's Just like, oh foot. yeah, he's got a calf fetish. <laughs> you know, the classic <laughs> calf fetish. <laughs> By the way, that reminds me. I I remember when I was in college, I forgot the word for calf, and I said four leg. <laughs> <laughs> I did that with like the skin on your for like the excess skin on your arm and called it foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> that is my science teacher. That's what it should be called. Wait, then. how old were you? How old are you? Too old. <laughs> I, that. I was actually gonna guess eighteen because <laughs> I was gonna be like. Gabby, let's guess an outlandish age that it couldn't possibly be. But no, that was what it oh, actually dude, I'm, was. I'm, yeah. straight up, I'm straight up stupid, man. Like you said a word <laughs> earlier, and I was like, I don't know what that means. But <laughs> I, was my head. I just said, okay. I dropped out of college, man. The trick is college. you just take in a bunch of shit from the TV and you don't necessarily yeah. know what it means, but you're like, maybe this is what it means in context. And you say it, and for the most part, no one questions it. Yeah, I didn't mm. question it. I was like, she sounded like she knew what she was talking about. Yeah, no, there's a huge misconception. misconception. Uh, there's a huge Mish. misconception that I'm smart um, because I did do really well on my uh, SAT twos, which were not the SATs, but they were the secondary. But it all it all tanked from there. What are the SAT twos? What is that for? It's like the SAT is in a subject. It's just basically for corny ass. Oh, people. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that briefly. You must have taken them, Mr. Right, Northwestern. Guys, <laughs> I did. I did take the SAT. Tell me. I tell you the SAT scores. What were your math and reading scores? Let's compare. My math was seven ten. I think. Oh fuck Whoa. off. Whoa. <laughs> my reading was much lower. My reading was my. I'm. I'm very bad at reading. I had um, the opposite. My reading was, I think, like six ninety, and my math was six ten. And then the writing section, which they just got rid of, was like really mm. high. But it's yeah, bullshit, so it doesn't matter. What about you? I think my, oh yeah, Zach. I think my total was like, I don't remember each individual. But I think my total was like a twelve six, like twelve sixty, mm -hmm. for the math and reading. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, I, I think it was more reading though. Yo, did you, you take the writing component? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember what you did on that? I think I had like, I get it, it had to be like low 600s maybe mm -hmm. like maybe mm -hmm. high 500s because i think i had like an 18 like 1800 total uh, but i had a 2.8 gpa you know <laughs> I did not, I did is not it funny though how no one remembers this shit now like the yeah. other day i asked my girlfriend what her sat was and she was like i don't know i don't know a single i don't remember i blacked out i don't remember a single thing of what my sat was yeah and i think I that's just what happens total. when you're 31 <laughs> yeah yeah. I think I remember my total. I think my total was 1960. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's really yeah. good. That's really good. And that was the third time I took it. Yeah, oh, I damn. Got, I think I had yeah. like, I think I had like a 1580 the first time I took it, and then I took Adderall the second time I took it, and like, oh, just I don't know. It was like the first drug. time. It was just oh, so wow. fun. 
I just had like a really, really good time taking the SAT and I wanted to take it again. And and then <laughs> it, it did something. It did something. I Damn, love you properly, that about Adderall. <laughs> you had a Queen's Gambit experience. You just you took a thing and then just it just worked. Yeah, dude. They're not <laughs> fucking around on Queen's Gambit. That shit is really what happens when you take Adderall. Like you see shit on the ceiling, you're like, oh, I'm gonna type out every single animal in the animal kingdom. <laughs> It's fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching that in uh with my uh mom and my uncle, and my uncle was like, they wouldn't give this to kids in an orphanage. And my mom is a psychologist, and she was like, No, 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 they did that back then. This is very real. I was just like, Oh shit. Yeah, what a personality they probably have. High chance of getting adopted. I'm so fun when I'm on Adderall. So fun. My penis <laughs> is this big when I'm on it, but it's so fun, you know. There was a time in college where me and my like like one of like the first few times we were taking Adderall, and like I don't know if you know this, Gabby, but when you take Adderall, your your penis is very small. Don't know why. It's Gabby. It's, how does your penis look on Adderall? Huge, enormous, just okay, fucking. Okay, so maybe I just have a small penis. Yeah. But like we were walking through the halls, like, and we were just like my friend Chris like looked in his pants. He's like, dude, my dick is so small right now. And I looked at mine, and I was like, yo, mine is two. And then we like looked at each other, like, whoa, whoa, those are two very tiny dicks. <laughs> but great time. Just so okay. Just so I understand the logistics. Does it shrink I when you take like, the pill? The is not like rushing down there. It's then all this. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Brain. I did. Um, I've never done uh, Adderall, but I did go skinny dipping, uh, in Lake Michigan. And it was freezing, freezing, freezing cold. And I had never seen my penis shrivel up to such a small size. It's like a it big looked, clit. Yeah. Sorry. It was a big, beautiful I would, clit. I would, yeah. It was. <laughs> you know what? There's something so <laughs> darling about it. <laughs> and your balls are just trying to get as close to your body as possible. They They're look like they're hugging you. They're hugging you. They don't look you. like danglers. They look like. like upside down mounds or hills there after like... so long away lucas they just want to come home yeah <laughs> they're like freshmen coming home for thanksgiving they're like i missed you mom <laughs> oh you know what i did on thanksgiving what what cocaine wow tell us about that for the oh my 15 year olds at home <laughs> Yeah, the children oh, yeah. who have oh, this yeah. to Sorry, look forward Sanders. to. Right. No, right. we can talk about that. We talk about everything. I don't believe no, in nothing is off limits. I right. genuinely don't believe in keeping things from kids. All I really right. don't. Yeah. So, so, children, one thing I would say is that cocaine's a really good time. And you should definitely do it. Like right mm. now. Right now. <laughs> no, no um, it, it was not the plan, but I, I didn't go home for Thanksgiving, so I hung out. I know some friends, you know, mm. friends that friends that you know, you know. I feel like I shouldn't out anyone. We, yeah, let's not out anyone. We won't out anyone. Um, As an abuser of cocaine, it was my first time. Wow, Whoa. It was my first time. Um, honestly, truthfully, I I was like, it was less. It was underwhelming, but good. Like I wasn't. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be like crazy. It's like a you cup know? of coffee. Honestly, it, God. Honestly, not even like I wasn't even talking fast. Like I feel like I'm talking fast now, but like mm -hmm. on that, I just felt how I did like pre-trauma and dep like I felt like a like a 17 year old like just like out in the world. Like I'm like, oh, I'm Zach right now. Like I'm Zach. I'm proud of you for having all your trauma happen after 17. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you know I waited. Oh my god. <laughs> I had a great childhood. So so I was about to say good things come to those who wait, but I was like, I don't have the heart. <laughs> you waited for marriage. You, you waited yeah. for when the Lord said you could have trauma. <laughs> yeah, the Lord said, I'm going to give you all your trauma. All of it. <laughs> right now. <laughs> so fast. Right now. So fast. We preach abstinence, uh, ladies, gents. Uh, yeah, cocaine, but no sex. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah, yeah, just do just do drugs. You don't need to fuck. There's no yeah. reason. you just end up with regrets. But never with drugs. That's mm. what they say, you know. Yeah.
So, so then wait, what did you, you wait, go on Lucas. Sorry. No, no, I'd ask you. I was going to basically, I was going to ask like, what was it like the come down or like the next day? You know, what was that? I those felt like? so fine. Like it was, mm-hmm. it was just, first of all, I had like the best Thanksgiving meal I ever had. Like mm. it was just like really good food. And then we just did some cocaine drank and like played on the Oculus. Oh, <laughs> I used like, to work in virtual reality for a number so, of years. You know, That's like lightsaber guitar hero game where you have like the it's like yes. two lightsaber. Oh, games. I've seen those. That looks super fun. Dude, we so went fun. straight to expert mode, dude. <laughs> no easy. <laughs> <laughs> no easy. That that sounds like a good combination. A high focus game with something that makes you very focused. Like that sounds that sounds like a good combo. I would do it every day. I would do that combination every day. You simply mean not cocaine. You mean cocaine and Guitar Hero on Expert yes, Mode. Yes, only, only, on, yeah. Yeah, only together. That's how John Mayer learned. I don't know why I thought of him first. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, no. child John Mayer went to the future, got an Oculus, came home, and then oh, grew I just, up. I just thought it was about his, him and his, his guitar. And his, your body is one. You know, just your like. Your body is a one. It still slaps. It still it goes. I gotta does. say. <laughs> yeah. it, it does. The cops are after us. Sorry. Um, yeah. Okay. They heard us talking about this. And. <laughs> now, no. cut. No. Uh, yeah. First time I did cocaine. Actually. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the first time I did it, I was in a bar with uh, two friends and one of them pulled me into the bathroom without the other one and was like, we're going to do cocaine. It was my first time doing it. I was super nervous. And she was like, but listen, I don't have a lot. So you can't tell Mikey we did this. And I was like, such a nerd I am. I was like, I have to be high on drugs and keep a secret. Like, this is my worst nightmare. So I did a few drugs. And then one thing I didn't realize was that cocaine makes you have to poop. Because they lace it with like baby oil and stuff, like like laxatives. So, oh, lax- oh my god! So I just ran out of the club that we were in, and I was like, "Mikey, I can't tell you why, but I have to shit myself." <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> um, and then the last time I did it was um, I went to some man's house with like a couple of friends, and uh, one of the friends was like a new friend, so I kind of knew him from work. I kind of didn't. But he was just, you know, those people who just bullshit, like they're nice people, but they just say things that aren't true. At one point he said, you know, if you've ever done cocaine, you can't go to space because your nose will blow up. And I started crying and I don't know why, but I was like, (laughs) I didn't realize this until now, but I feel like I kind of want to go to space. (laughs) It just ruined all your plans of being an astronaut. Of. astronaut just going to space just seeing what it's like eventually oh just to like just cruise around and then come back down like what stephen hawking did on his birthday yeah they just have that for non-space people they're just like come into space for a little and then come back i just wanted mm. to go it just seemed yeah. nice i didn't even know that was a thing i don't think is that is actually a thing. a thing or is is that actually a thing i googled it but the google search is so weird it's like cocaine in space like you can't really get no, anything I mean, out of it Stephen hawking like flying Hmm. just taking oh. a cash trip lucas yeah. i don't know is it real uh wait uh, of like a cocaine affecting your nose and in space no i mean of stephen hawking traveling through space oh no i know i've seen the video of it it seemed like him like out of his chair and he's just like floating around and he's smiling and he really enjoys it it's very oh, sweet it's I him like experiencing that. zero gravity but all the time i was thinking is he does he need to go to the bathroom but he, he the one tool that can express that for him is is not at his disposal <laughs> <laughs> oh no I'm sure he found a way. He's an astrophysicist. Yeah. He can put his piece somewhere for yeah, a while. Yeah. He, just, just... <laughs> he can just think it somewhere. Yeah, no, I, I feel weirdly I feel I feel I feel out of my depth because I've never I've never done cocaine. I haven't done that many drugs. I've like I've smoked weed, I've ha- drunk alcohol, and I once did Molly. Um I've never done Molly. Never done it's Molly either. A hoot. It is a hoot, let me tell you. I, I think I would have too much fun. I get scared. I actually was like terrified of cocaine forever. Like I never even yeah. ever, ever doing it. And then I, yeah, I have no, in- I have no interest in ever trying cocaine, but honestly your experience sounds like very lovely. It, was it sounds really, really wholesome. Like, I yeah, was, really like, wholesome. I had like a really nice Thanksgiving dinner with my friends and like, like I just, it felt, it felt nice. <laughs> that sounds really That's lovely. lovely. I love that. I also That's, love Lucas yeah. that you described Molly as a hoot. 
Oh, it was it was a hoot and a half. I feel like was... you become like a like a wine mom when you're on. Well, let me tell you something. This is a hoot. <laughs> Never thought I'd be so fucked up for bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what happened basically is that, um, well, first off, any texture becomes amazing. Mm -hmm. Any and all textures just feel awesome. And then just everyone around you just becomes beautiful. And I was like telling all my friends where I was like, you are gorgeous. Your hair looks amazing. I was just like, I was just telling everyone how beautiful they were. And we were, we were outdoors and it was the trees. Look, Everything just looked and felt amazing, basically. And yeah. And then you end up grinding your teeth for like a little while. But the next day, but they, they say like, um, because it just like dumps all the serotonin or dopamine. I don't know which one it is. Um, they say because it like dumps that all um, yeah, like the, the next day you feel pressures. really bad. I did not feel bad at all the next day. I felt awesome. So it was a very nice experience for me. I love that. Yeah, it was really nice. Have you done was, acid? Was, I, I've never done acid. No, I'm. I'm very interested because I've heard a lot of fun stories about it. Dude, I was on acid when Kobe died. Whew, that tripped me out. No, no. <laughs> that tripped me out. No. Dude, I was just like having so much fun with another friend that you know. And we were just like, oh, cool. we were like in her room and we were like making up games on pieces of paper that like only we would understand, but it was like the funniest <laughs> thing. And then she like looks at her phone for like two seconds and I just feel the shift of energy in the room. I'm like, hey, what's wrong? She's like, no, Kobe died. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, Kobe Bryant and his daughter died. And I was just like, this is, no, <laughs> this is not the time for me to be hearing this information. No. Like, oh, my was God. Crazy, um, we, were, we went outside to the roof later that night, and there was just like this light in the sky that we couldn't see where it was coming from. It just looked like it was in the sky, and it was like changing colors. And at first, she didn't notice. I'm like, hey. Do you, do you see that light in the sky that just keeps changing colors, but we can't see where it's coming from? And I was just like, is that Kobe's spirit? So I like, genuinely <laughs> believed it. Like, there was, like, a part of me that, like, genuinely believed that his spirit was so powerful and everyone was mourning so hard. And because I was on LSD, that, like, only I could really see. <laughs> it was just a light in the sky that's there every night, but I never go on the roof, so... But that's oddly that's really sweet though that feels that's like incredible. one of those things on twitter people imagine where it's like and in heaven rbg and ben franklin just fucked like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like i don't know if you heard about ruth conda when it happened but uh chadwick boseman and ruth uh bader ginsburg died like when they died like right next to each other like within a mm. couple of days um this like tweeter said that her daughter said um ruth conda forever and she was like that's oh, a crossover just, event i can I, get behind <laughs> oh i just got that it was wakanda i did <laughs> my, my brain oh. went first to ruth anaconda and then, ruth! And then I got yeah it. and then that's kind of what i was thinking too and then i was like wait oh my ruth anaconda don't want none <laughs> Got now I'm imagining Ruth Bader Ginsburg on Nicki Minaj's body, and I just I can't process it. Now that's her head an acid looks trip. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it's uh, much of an ass in trip. Uh, there's I'm just imagining Ayo. like Ayo. 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 oh bang bang, boom. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to imagine like that tiny tiny little tiny little Ruth head on um, with. On the same body as that, that gigantic sweet woman. Booty. She did have a very small head. You can say a lot about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but you can't say her head was physically large. No. <laughs> you can say can't. only. Oh God! But that's so oh. funny. You <laughs> be died the day you took acid. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my God! Um. So tell us about well, your dream. Oh, yes, please tell us about your dream. Okay. Okay. Okay, here's the dream. So, I was at a skate park, like an outdoor skate park. Because I think I've been, because I've been watching a lot of skateboarding videos. I, I'm becoming a poser skater in mm -hmm. quarantine, where I just watch YouTube of cooler people than me skateboarding. But 
I was then I went into like the skate shop at the skate park to try and buy a skateboard. And I got my skateboard. I was going doing some doing some skateboarding, and then I had to go to the bathroom. The bathroom was like an outdoor. It was like a building, and like you walked in, it was like public restroom. And I get in there, and I'm at the urinal, and then there's like, I don't, I don't know, man. Is a very large man walked in. I'm I'm a very large person, but I I felt like I was a child compared to him. A very large man walked in, and he started talking to me. And then he came like really close to me and then he just started peeing on me like side of my face and shoulder like just started peeing on me man and i just started screaming i was like what the fuck and i run outside and then and then i see a man cleaning up vomit and i start vomiting into his vomit into the vomit that he's cleaning up and then the guy comes out and it was also definitely like a display of dominance like this wasn't like oops mm. accidentally peed on you it was like it was like I, i'm gonna pee on you like like type thing so he peed on me and and then i just vomited and then he kept getting close to me outside and i woke up and then i was just upset you know just <laughs> yeah understandably not, not upset. Much, like, more to the dream but like also like i didn't even like have time to like really process it when i woke up because let me just show you something because i'm home and like everyone's like working from home now my dad moved his he has his home office is in my freaking bedroom so this is where my dad works <laughs> so I, every single day when i'm sleeping like this i wake up and my dad is six inches away from me <laughs> <laughs> so i just like wake up look at my dad i'm like this this is too much for me right now I just have to leave. <laughs> just have to leave <laughs> Um, yeah, I got peed on. I'm trying to figure out what that's about. It makes me want to Google symbolism of pee in dreams. Mm. I know if you're peeing in your dream, you normally means you're peeing in real life. But so wait, does that mean that in your dreams, that person who appeared in your dreams is peeing right now while you're asleep? It could. Be. Oh, that's true. It could be like a parallel universe. Yeah. It could be like Inception. It would be like a shared dream, but where it's someone funny. is peeing in your dream. It's just like there's a perfectly good urinal, you know, right next to me. I was high. <laughs> Dreaming of someone peeing on you. If someone has peed on you in a dream and that is someone you know, but it wasn't anyone you knew, right? It wasn't anyone I know, but it was like a big, like rednecky guy. Like he had a flannel. He was like built though. He had like a flannel and like boot cut jeans and boots on. Oh, okay, Ooh. the apple. I, was, I immediately thought I was like, <laughs> did Larry, the cable guy, like pee on you in your dream? No, I would have enjoyed that a lot more because at least I'm like, it's funny, you know. But no, it's just, like really, just uh, just as a power grab. Okay. Can I just say, there's a full article here of all the different kinds of dreams you can have about pee, and I want to read them to you guys because they oh, escalate good. naturally. It's dreaming of peeing in general. Okay, fine. Dreaming of peeing in a toilet. Dreaming of peeing in bed. Dreaming of peeing on yourself. Dreaming of peeing all over your feet. <laughs> dreaming of watching someone peeing. Dreaming of peeing and feeling pain. Dreaming of holding your pee. Dreaming of not being able to find a place you can pee. Dreaming of someone peeing on you. And dreaming of peeing blood urine. <laughs> oh. Oh, there's also dreaming of peeing on someone. Unusual places. Dreaming of seeing someone peeing turn towards you. Dreaming of peeing in front of other people, peeing at your workplace, peeing outside your home, peeing inside your home, <laughs> on the floor. There's one that's just peeing everywhere. Uh, <laughs> if, I, if I may, um, anywhere you pee is either inside your home or outside of your home. So th those are just two very big umbrella terms. Once I got stoned and I realized that the inside is just the outside with borders. So <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Dreaming of someone peeing on you. If someone pees on you in a dream, that dream could reveal your feelings of being burdened by that person. Possibly that person is overwhelming mm. you with negativity. This dream could also reveal having low self-esteem and not being in control over some areas in your life. Oh, I'm not in control of any area of my life. So, <laughs> spot on. <laughs> didn't have to get you know, didn't have to have a guy pee on me in my dream to tell me that what if i was just like that website was breitbart.com it's <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> like some interpretation website <laughs> uh when we thank uh the sponsor for this uh, this episode QAnon. Uh <laughs> 
We're gonna have QAnon on the pod. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's a New York comedian. Or she. <laughs> or they. Or they. If QAnon just very earnestly was like, do not misgender me. Oh my god, this bitch. <laughs> that I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest, that would throw me for a loop and I would be really impressed. Yeah. That would be really nice. What do you guys think of this adorable coup? That's <laughs> sexy coup that's going on yeah. this darling darling little coup I don't Zach, know. I just any... kind of figured it was going to happen like did I'm you see surprised. you saw the writing on the wall what was I just felt like everyone I thought we were, we knew that was going to happen right yeah like, I was always I was always scared because I was talking about it with my mom uh, where she was like I'm scared about like what Trump is going to do um in the time he has left as president, um, like what he's going to set off. And I was just like, yeah, I was still just riding on the high of Biden winning. But I thought, oh, full on, full on storming the castle. No, I like I got, I got like, of course, very happy that Biden was like, okay. But then I like, in my head, I was like, shit is like, just from his like messages, like stand back mm-hmm. and like stand by. I was like, something is going to happen. That was, yeah. Something's going to happen. Like, I felt like I thought that they were going to try some shit, but I didn't think it would work. I didn't think they would mm, make honestly, it. I thought their attack was pretty weak. Mm, what would you have done differently, sir? <laughs> In the yeah. coup. This is, okay, yeah, this is, we have wedding planning. This is coup planning. This is, I don't, what, no, what aesthetic kind of like do you want with your coup? And like, yeah, and then what? Yeah, no, they all yeah. kind of just cheered, and although they did, they did do some other fucked up things, but uh, no, they got into like people's offices. Yeah, they went I to remember... Nancy Pelosi's computer. <laughs> yeah, and they were like showing all these papers and letters and shit. I remember I saw like someone on the a woman who's mm-hmm. saying like, "Yeah, we just we just got in we just got in the building and um and the, and they asked what did you want to do and they said well we wish the senators were there so we could drag them out by the hairs on their heads and then. And well, they're they said, all bald. And, it won't work. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, Nancy Nancy Pelosi is not. Say what you want, but she has hair. Um, <laughs> and what I you want checked. about Nancy Pelosi? <laughs> but she sure has hair on her head. <laughs> Say what you want about RBG, but she has a small head. <laughs> they're no. just objective. <laughs> Say what you want about Lucas Arnold, but he exists. <laughs> <laughs> but I really felt like they just got in there and were like, okay, now what? <laughs> I think they didn't expect yeah, it to work. Yeah, no, here's the thing. They were no the woman I saw on the news, she said that she wanted to like drag senators out by the hairs on their heads and just say no more. She was very vague though. And the, but then she said, Oh, we're very nonviolent though. And I was like, What what's your definition of violence? Is it like wounding someone? Because like pulling someone by their scalps, that's that's no, it's what the Antifas do. I would, you would yell. yell. Mm. Like a girl pulled my hair one time. I yelped, yelped real loud. When did a girl pull your hair? Sex. Mm. Did you ask, or was it just kind of spur of the moment? She just she just grabbed it, and I just. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> you went, oh no! <laughs> well, if it's a surprise, I would probably do the same thing. I would be like, ah, it would, yeah. Like I don't like pain. Like please stop. <laughs> wait i have to go pee on zach for the fifth episode in a row talk about yourself okay okay um i have a new like on tinder we can see who it is yo one time i matched with this girl i didn't i didn't match i, I did match with her because i liked her name her name is poo <laughs> so funny. wait was she was she ty no nah, dude oh no she was can black. you can you tell me oh she was black okay she was black and her name was poo and like I didn't say I didn't want to message her because I was just like thinking of like so many like just the comedian in me was like, is Pooh your real name? And then she'd be like, no, that's like my nickname. And I'm just like, who gave that? Wait, to me? My have you seen have you seen uh, the name Shathid? Shathid, Shathid, but it's yeah. spelled shithead, right. It's spelled shithead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that is just like a real no. There's a, there's a really good YouTube video, and it's just like it's a girl called Shithi, and she's like, "I'm Shithi, and then I dance like this. I'm Shithi, and I can only count to six. What the fuck? Come after six? And I it's think just I all seen that. 
I think I have. I'm Shathir and I do a black flip. It's, and she just does a black, a black flip, but she's also black. And that's what it is. Oh, God. Yeah, it's the most is, random shit. This, so, is, yeah. this, is, this is Lydia. Oh, oh okay. Let's, let's not show her face on, on the pie. Okay. Why not? I mean, she I mean, she doesn't cons. Huh? She has 28 teeth since that matters. Aren't you supposed to have 32? Yeah. So we're going to say no to that. Yeah. Well, it depend I mean, if they're on like the very very back like molars or something, then then I guess it doesn't matter, but if it's that's like fine. all right in the front, then that that's going to that's going to halt appearances. Yeah. 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 Can Gabby, you uh me? Zach. Sorry, what were you saying, Gabby? I was just saying, thus continues my streak of peeing in the middle of every episode. <laughs> yeah. I used to be like, it. I never I'm enjoying, do this. I'm enjoying a boys moment here. Um, Whoa, you saying I'm not one of the boys? This is so anti-girl boss. I'm not saying it, I'm saying you're saying it. That's what it is. Ah! So what were you two talking about in your boys club? Your little boys club. Oh, yeah. I had a new match on Tinder, and then I put mm -hmm. her on the screen, and Luke said, ooh, don't do that, because, you know, he's responsible. And then in her bio, it said she only has 28 teeth. Um, How many are you supposed to have? And that's a real question. That I think I it's 32. Know. Isn't it? Isn't it 32? 32 teeth? I could be wrong. Oh, wait, I'm going to look it up. Oh, my it God, Zach doesn't know. <laughs> I One, think. Two, three, oh, yeah, we're counting four, four or five. five Seven, eight, nine, ten, nine. 32 yeah 32 teeth is normal i, I just want to let that bottom oh my god <gasps> Wait. Are okay you... so this is your future wife because she has ten, also eight, an eight, abnormal eight, number of teeth yeah i remember i um i remember i met a dude who said that he had to have five wisdom teeth taken out okay and for some right. reason like at one point in his mouth he had like an extra two. 28 teeth Maybe the wisdom teeth are the other four. Oh, that could be. Oh, you know so what? She's That's... just trying to be different. Or when she that might be. Only has twenty four other teeth. But why didn't she get her molar? Or why didn't she get her wisdom teeth out? Does she oh just have perfect wisdom? Oh, so what you're saying is she might have not had her wisdom teeth taken out yet. At which point, though, she will have twenty four. Is that what you're saying, Gabby? I'm saying twenty four teeth that aren't wisdom teeth and her wisdom teeth are all in perfectly so by that measure she has 28 teeth so it's like she's doing right but it's also wrong you know what i mean hmm. <laughs> you know how some things in life are just sometimes they're right and sometimes they're all wrong <laughs> <laughs> it's like this woman's teeth <laughs> so did you swipe right or uh <laughs> i mean i don't really look i just go like i just swipe that swipe right yeah. no have you have you seen that video of like a, a chicken breast just like that's attached to a machine that just infinitely swipes right on tinder on a phone <laughs> whoa that's essentially me yeah that is a guy <laughs> thing but isn't that why they created tinder gold and stuff so that you have like unlimited matches probably is that it? I, think. I thought that was just a way to just in just to make money I thought that was just like a money thing. Probably a little bit of both, but I think the gold has unlimited. I'm like yeah. unlimited swipe. Because mm. like I know that you run out of, I've heard from friends you like run out of swipes at a certain point if you don't pay for it. And if you pay for it, you never run out of swipes. And I think mm. the whole thing is like, so one of my friends, my like straight guy friends, he created a Python algorithm that swipes on Hinge for him because your account locks if you try and swipe right on too many people, like on mm -hmm. on certain apps. Um, if you swipe like 75% yes and 25% no, your account will never lock and it'll get you the maximum amount of matches that you can possibly get just from like the sheer numbers of it. And he told us this and my best friend, who's a girl, was like, oh my God, like that you could miss your future wife in that 25%. And he just doesn't care. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Because, like, at a very simple level, you want to, like, go through the profiles and see, like, what stuff you like and dislike. Or just if you're attracted to someone. So, like, if you're just, if, 
if it's literally just playing a numbers game, you're, you could be getting rid of so many like really compatible people. Like where's, where, where's the logic? I do you not want to find love, friend of Gabby. Are you I not don't looking? Like people that are terrible for me, so don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> there should be a new dating app for that. Just terrible for you. <laughs> just where you can just swipe on the worst people. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all you do. It's like there's you don't write good things about you. You have to write your flaws down. Mm. That's actually that's not a bad idea. <laughs> just that, that, that toxic remind... traits over and over again. <laughs> That does remind me, I was, wait, what would you say, Zach? Will cheat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Will not be loyal. <laughs> Will sleep with no. your best friend. <laughs> Never cooks, leaves all the dishes out. Uh, I When I come over to your place, you will find more mess. Uh, will trash all your shit. Doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yeah. that's, that's yeah. me. No, I, I feel no. I get really weird about that. I would never do that. I'm too. I'm too self conscious. Yeah. What wait, is your? I, pet, so wait, but, I was gonna ask what his pet peeve was. What were you gonna ask? I have ooh. a feeling it's similar. Hmm. What were you gonna ask, Lucas? I mean, I'll answer. I don't know. I don't know my pet peeve. Just don't. I don't know. Well, no. Okay. I was. I, it was gonna be something similar. It was gonna be like what? Um. Yeah. Pretty much. What pet peeves and also like red flags? That's what I wanted to know. Red flags mm. for uh, online dating. I'm a little slut, man. Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like if you're hot, I don't care what the flags are. They could have big old red flags. I'll be like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> Listen, if the flags are hot, <laughs> who cares? Yeah. <laughs> if the flags are high, it don't matter. <laughs> Like the last person I talked to was clearly in love with her ex, and I was like, "That's fine." <laughs> That's so you were fine. like, "Love is love is love." <laughs> yeah. You were like, "No hate." I think that's why I liked her so much. Oh, so they're beautiful. red flags, but they're perky red flags. Oh. Oh. So her face is so perfect. Oh. <laughs> she just like, like she just like gaslight me. I'd be like, "Thank you." <laughs> Oh, that's so horrible. I it's like, you're right. That is how it is, actually. I'm crazy. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for putting me in check. <laughs> I did that so many times. <laughs> like, one time she posted a picture on Instagram of her ex's hand. like, And I was like, this is like really weird. And she was like, it seems like you have a problem with everything. I'm like, no, I'm so sorry. You're right. <laughs> oh, no. Zach said, no hate, love is love, all love is valid, including love where she's in love with her ex. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. So there's literally, realistically, is there anything that would make you go, you know what, this isn't for me, this is too much. Is there anything? Um, I, I don't, I don't like, just from a hinge profile? Um, in general. Like, just, like... Let's let's say both from the profile and also f after maybe one or two dates. Hmm. I'm trying to help our audience fuck you, essentially. We're I trying to get you underage. on mute. Yeah. 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 Some of them are underage. Some of them are overage. Some oh, no, no, no. Yeah, mom. please be. Don't yeah, fuck my mom. Yeah. But... <laughs> I will. No. Again. Too. Again? Seriously? He um, can't stop himself. But yeah, but yeah, red yeah. flags uh, on a on a dating profile. Any anything? Let's say, okay, yeah. So let's say it's just super hot. Of, yeah, but what if they put be? a Snapchat. If they have a Snapchat filter on their face, on the profile. Okay, but, it, but does it not depend those. on the filter? Maybe that's true. That's true. I don't is it know. like I feel like I'm pretty pretty objective. Like, I'm pretty open. Like I'm, I'm like I, I won't. See. Here, maybe I could I could swipe. I'll, I can swipe on Hinge with you with you guys. Yeah, okay. sure. Just, but don't direct it. Don't direct it to the camera. No, 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 no. Don't direct it to the camera. Let's. We can blur it out. Just kidding. We can't. We don't have those capabilities. Okay, no. So read us the bios, Savannah. maybe. Okay, Savannah. Okay, this is Savannah, mm. and her prompts are together. We could rob a bank. Um. I like that. I'm convinced that the yeah. bird, 
um, let's make sure we're on the same page about the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. Um, hmm. But what page it, is that? Just, yeah, you didn't even tell hmm. me. It, it's. I don't want to rob a bank, you know? I don't want to <laughs> rob a bank. Uh, <laughs> okay, so that's It would be funny swipe. if you matched and... It would be, if it's hinged, can't you like leave a comment so you can be like, just yeah. comment and you just go, actually, we can't. I have no interest. Yeah, I don't want to do this. <laughs> um, that's also like... Really so you're cool. going to have to compromise. Just like... I, yeah, yeah, for sure. So this is Marissa. And she says she's weirdly attracted to, to people that already have therapists. I like that. That's good. That's funny. It's, um, that's nice. Brag about you to my friends if you have friends to go on double dates with. Um, my my mm. most rational fear is setting house on fire. I actually think I don't like it when people take the prompt serious. Yeah, I can understand that's, that. That like, that is an this, evolved red. That's an evolved way of thinking about this it. Is, I like this that. is a no for me. Mm. Like, um, we should do this with all our guests. By yeah. the way, this is a fucking. This blast. is this is a really good idea. Yeah. We're the same type of weird if you also turn any holiday gathering into a competitive sport. Like, stop fucking trying. <laughs> yeah, no, that, like, well, the thing is, that's also kind of like a basic answer. That's sort yeah, of like just basic. like a basic. It's, it's really basic. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you want the gym to your pan, Wait, you can I tell? Pick I'll me. fall for you. I'll <laughs> fall for you. If you're silly, it's like, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Not to be too crazy. edgy, but I love The Office. Like, uh, yeah. I also mm-hmm. love The Office, but you can't say it on a dating app. You just can't. Yeah, just, just don't. Yeah. Just. Like, could you be less specific, please? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my simple p- pleasures being crushed under a weighted blanket. I like that one. That's I like at least that too. Kind of, um, I'm actually legitimately yeah. bad at finding objects that are right in front of me. Oh, you, you're so ditzy. <laughs> um, <laughs> the secret to getting to know me is Venmo transactions in Spotify. It's like she's trying to be like, mm, you know, but it, it did hit the spot, but mm. kind of hot. So, you know, we'll like it. Um, Venmo remember, transactions from Spotify is like, you can't be a brand shill on this app. <laughs> but go on, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I remember, I think it was, I think it might've been on Bumble that I, um, it was like, what was your most recent act of kindness? And I answered it with um, uh, stopping uh, stopping the house fire by turning off my mixtape. Hey. <laughs> That's good. That's good. But also just, this just reminded me of like last like act of kindness you did. Um, There's one time a few months ago, I was just walking into a bodega and, and this homeless lady comes up to me and asks if I can buy um, baby formula. And like, she, like, if she had a baby, she, which she probably did because she asked for baby formula. I mean, I felt I'm like, yeah, I can get you some baby formula. So then she starts like talking to me and I'm like, it's just, I'll get you the baby formula. Like, I'm, I'll do this. I was also going in for a 99 cent Arizona iced tea. So I was like a little like, dang it, I'm going to spend some money today. So then she gets to the counter and she asks for two baby formulas. I'm like, it's okay. This baby needs to eat. And then he rings it up. He's like sixty six dollars. And I just looked at her. I'm like one baby formula. <laughs> oh, <laughs> baby only deserves baby one. formula is expensive. Wow. Honest to God, and that's what that really is sucks. So expensive. Oh, poor thing. Jesus. I feel so bad. I felt bad too, but I don't. I'm sorry about your baby. You no, know? yeah. If you don't have the cash on hand at the time, it's harder to harder to do. I understand. I want. I wonder how many times that works though. How many times people go, you know, I'll get your baby formula. And then they go two and then you get $66 and they go, "Er, okay. Like how many times actually does a person follow through? I would follow through. I'm such a simp. I would follow through. I once, I bought a guy a a McDonald's meal. He wanted to be bought a McDonald's meal. And uh, he asked for like five things. And I was like, you know what? You got to eat. Like, honestly, like what the fuck am I going to spend this on? Weed? No, I'm just going to take this out of my weed budget and buy you a nice filet of fish because- I honestly think that, like, one of the worst things is, like, beggars can't be choosers. Like, if I were on the street starving and someone gave me a sandwich in it with roasted red peppers, it's the only thing I in the world I won't eat. I'll eat everything else. But for some reason, roasted red peppers and only the red ones, not the green ones, not the yellow ones. 
I would not eat it. I would starve to death. And I think that huh. everyone who's on the street should have the same yeah. privilege to be like, you know I'm, what? Fuck it. I'm choosing this shit. I actually mm. like low key. Like, I agree with you for sure. In, in this context, I like was writing like a joke, and it was like they say like beggars can't be juicers. This up, but if I'm begging begging you for water and you give me saltine crackers, like you're definitely the dick. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's the exact opposite of what you asked for. So yeah textbook no thing. but i i definitely get suckered in like all the time like there's times I, I walk out of the deli with like a sandwich and a gatorade and someone's like please sir can you spare some food and i'm just like okay here and then i go back into the deli and get my another boat, a gatorade and, mm. and you know what i really do think there should be more people like that because that's lit as fuck yeah that, that's no, that is a good because if you can afford to do it, it is a good thing to do yeah, yeah this this summer has been like the first time thanks to unemployment like like COVID's terrible. Love that five hundred dollars a week. Oh, that, that was a mid. That hit so nice. So, that six hundred a like week the, or so. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah. It was like the first time I come into like that amount of money like ever in my life. So I was just like, yeah, I have money to buy everyone I want things. Mm-hmm. But I was just like, I'd spend it so fast. Oh, so fast. We were all redistributing like our unemployment money. I feel like in like June and August or whatever. And then Jeff Bezos was like, I'll give you all $50 if you beg. <laughs> it's like fucking assholes, you know, just like we should all run. The what? World. What did Jeff Bezos do? He didn't, I didn't hear about this. Jeff Bezos. He didn't do this, but he like, I'm just saying like the mo- he- Jeff Bezos, I feel like gets praised for like giving like a million dollars to charity or something but for him a million dollars is like the equivalent of like 50 dollars or like less than that oh yeah it's actually like one cent actually for jeff bezos yeah and he like doesn't yeah he doesn't even yeah he doesn't even give the money he's like i'm gonna start a charity so if you want to donate you can (laughs) yeah come on man here's my go to be honest like i i would have I would have done so. I feel like I would have done something similar. Like I understand that mindset because I remember when there was like a food drive for for Haiti when I was in elementary school. Everyone was like putting in canned canned food in like this big box, and my and I was the only one to put in a can opener. Yes, <laughs> my fucking heart <laughs> did me down. <laughs> <laughs> you are what so they nice. The can opener, like this is. What if they're like, this isn't fucking food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck my supposed to Asshole. eat this. <laughs> That's so nice. But I was though. like, how I was like, how I, I was like, how does anyone know that they don't have that they have a can opener if they're all just like ready for the cans of the can opener in one hand and a fork and I was like, we don't know for sure. I was like, so and so that was and so that was Good but that was actually cheaper than a, than a can of beans. So I was, it was economical as well for, for me. It was <laughs> a so less it was mechanically by inclined person could open this can of beans. Do you guys yeah. see that on Twitter? Bean dad? <laughs> bean dad. That was awesome. No. Oh, okay. you didn't hear about bean dad? Lucas, oh, take it God. away. Is... Oh yeah. So there is a dude on Twitter um, who was trying it's it starts off a little bit understandable. He so he has like a nine year old daughter, and she can't open this can of beans with a can opener. And he's trying to get her to learn how to do it, how to use a can opener. Uh, which, I'll also just jump off, in and say yes. that the the kid was like, "I'm hungry and I want a snack," and the guy was like, "Okay, well right. here's what we have in the pantry. It's baked beans," which is like so weird, but whatever. Okay, he had baked beans. Yeah, but go on. Yeah, and then and so but. And she ended up just sort of like fumbling with a can opener for six hours while she was just starving hungry. And then he posted this all to Twitter explaining all of this. And everyone was like, uh, you're a terrible parent. This, oh my God. You're just withholding food from your child for six hours. It was, yeah. And then he got taken off of Twitter. He had his account banned. Oh. And apparently he said like some sort of racist stuff in the past. And he's like, he's, he said, he's a questionable dude. 
I think he deleted yeah. his Twitter, honestly. I think he got bullied off. But basically, oh. part of the thread was he was like, you know, a more mechanically inclined child than mine would have figured out how to use a can opener already. But I just let her, you know, try it. And uh, she, like, couldn't do it. And she was struggling so hard. And at one point, she said, I hate you, Dad. And he was like, ha, ha, ha. No, you don't. But she did. <laughs> You see it from the thread. You're like, this child's going to grow up to be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my but God. I, my dad. Did I tell you about this? Do you know my dad? Okay, like, like, I have a Middle Eastern father who mm-hmm. just, like, he says the darndest things. He's like, he, like, came up to me, like, in the morning one day, and he just goes, did something happen to you as a child? That you're not telling us about. <laughs> I was like, "Are you trying to tell me something?" <laughs> you were like, "I don't know, Dad. Did it? Did it happen to me as a child?" You were there. <laughs> no, it was so funny. I think I was telling Lucas when he was like, "Yeah." He was like, "What's your issue? Like, what, like, I feel like you like you don't tell me anything." And I was like trying to be like, "Well, Dad." Sometimes I feel like you really don't listen to what you have to, like what I have to say, and you're just waiting for yourself to speak. Like I sometimes get like really, like I get I don't I get afraid because I don't know what to tell you. Uh, like I don't know how what you think. He said, "Let me stop you right there." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Try me," and I'm like, "This is you just did it." <laughs> oh my god, that that feels almost written. That feels almost like a sitcom or something. Because it was it's just, it it's... was literally. It was like, like wow. <laughs> that is, oh my God. So you were raised by a bean dad, maybe. Mm. No, kind of a bean dad. <laughs> there was one time we had like a fire pit out back, and like, you know how they have like the metal coverings that you like put over the, like, you can like, yeah, yeah, that's sort of like cage over. that you dip on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like the cage to like prevent like the ash from getting everywhere. And I was like seven and I was just like really like it was like really confusing me how you would remove the lid of it when the fire was on. And I'm like, is that hot? Like, is the lid hot? And he's like, try it. And I was oh, like, no. okay. And so I pick up the lid and burn the fuck out of my fingers. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. And I was just like, why did you do that? Like you could have told me a thought, and I would have been like, "Okay, that makes a lot more sense." <laughs> I mean, also my fault for not understanding the thing in fire is hot, but I was just really... no, 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 not your fault because you're a child with your parent. Well, that's the- classic. You're just being ready to be gaslit right there. You're like, "No, it's my fault," because like I didn't understand what hot and fire was, so it's like I really deserved to get burned, <laughs> you know. Oh my God! Oh, did he do anything? What did he do anything else like that? Or he was just like, see what happens. Like, <laughs> fuck around and find out. Just like, he's just a, he's just a weird dude. Like, I don't even th- <laughs> like. He's, I don't think he he doesn't even like realize he's doing. It's like it's just, it's just the like the ethnic parent. Like that's just, yeah. Like, that's just how they. We I both like we, two, we know how that goes. I have like yeah. two opposite. I think we all do like two like opposite. Like I have like a really really white mom, mm-hmm. and mm. it was just like overly nurturing, and then the yeah. dad who just like comes in randomly. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, his office is in your room, which I don't agree with. I don't think that's a good idea, but that's where it is. For the yeah, first kind of fifteen years though. of my life, my dad's clothing closet was in my bedroom. My dad oh. would have to like get dressed in the morning same. with, oh, my, really? <laughs> same. Like there is, yeah, there's like a closet that like opens out um, and he would just come into my room to pick out, pick out his like Hawaiian shirts. Your dad wore Hawaiian shirts? Well, that I love. Yeah. Yo, oh yeah. Dad. Another thing is that he is rail thin, my dad. He's a very skinny dude. He's one of the only like very thin dudes who's like it, almost exclusively any sort of formal wear, he would wear a Hawaiian shirt. Oh, so cute. My dad, for some reason, over the past like three years, has developed like such a style. Like, he just has like he's like a sneakerhead low key now and just has like oh, all really? these Adidas and Nikes and like 
you? Your dad's something... waiting online at Supreme. Yeah. Basically, he has all these fancy, nice shirts and like nice pants. I'm like, what happened? Is and he going to be like one of those kids that like makes millions of dollars by reselling like limited edition Nikes? Yeah, he should. He should. <laughs> should right from his desk right here. <laughs> Hi, Dad. You could be watching an empire bloom. I really could. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's so funny that waking up, there's like been moments though where I just like wake up and like I look up and he's like looking at me because like he <laughs> knows that I wake up and then we just like make eye contact and then start dying laughing. We both just start dying <laughs> laughing because we're like, what the fuck is this? This is so weird. That's kind of cute though. It was cute. It was cute. That's very, very sweet. Okay, wait, Zach, there is something we wanted to ask you about, which is that you uh, have very, very puffy nipples when did when did this when yes did, when we did, did both want to hear about the puffy nipples. Oh we want to hear about the and then we'll nips. go we'll go to listener submissions but we can't Indeed, listeners yeah. need to first hear about the nipple to... puff okay yeah. okay all right so it sounds like a cocktail i'll paint the picture <laughs> the i'll paint the picture puff. sixth grade on the bus mm-hmm. you know right 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 during puberty you know i had like i don't know if you know but sometimes your nipples get a little puffy in puberty um I don't know if yours did, Lucas. No, that wasn't no, mine. Me. Mine got a little puffy. I think it was because I was supposed. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I was supposed to be a girl, and then like last second, my balls dropped. But um, <laughs> no, I had like just like sensitive nipples for some reason. And mm-hmm. then this kid named John, we were doing all the titty twister things, and he got me and told me like to name five cereals until he let go and he was like an eighth grader so he had that fucking like, that like death grip that yeah like, that rage, <laughs> yeah that like so rage. if you were you were like 12 did you say yeah all right like so 12. you're below okay yeah and i couldn't name five cereals and oh, then no just permanent here i'll show you my look at this puppy nipple wait yeah i can't believe i'm saying this but can you put a little bit more of like a frontal angle on it okay well that's just a titty wow. For listeners who aren't seeing on YouTube, he's just pulling out the whole boob. All right, well I see it. It's a little round for sure. A little bit, yeah. It's it's some it's some (laughs) scar tissue that that happened. Hmm. I remember when after it happened for like two years, I couldn't grab my nipple. (laughs) Oh my god! They say that the scars of middle school will never leave, but I never intended it like this. Have you know anyone that like enjoyed middle school? I no. I will well, no actually one, say yeah. I enjoyed the first year because it was sixth grade and I was a child and like a late and like a late bloomer mm. and then I bloomed into puberty and I was like actually fuck this. Yeah, yeah. I did not like middle school. No what? one. I, I mean, like everyone talks about like people that like peaked in high school and they're like, uh, they're like oh that one football game and then the rest of their life is like shitty. But imagine what it must be like where your peak is middle school. Like how yeah. sad is no, that? No, there were some kids. Uh huh. Like, oh, yeah, for some, sure. <laughs> like there were. I remember like I'd see on Facebook this kid. Like he was like the coolest kid in middle school. He had like the spiky hair and stuff. Oh, not he's the spiky still, hair. Oh no. He's still doing the spiky hair now. Oh. 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 That's jean dreadful. Shorts. You know like the cool Ooh. jean shorts that they'd wear? Yeah. Jorts. Mm-hmm. Jorts. He still wears them with the spiky. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, and it's not even like the t- all spiky hair. It's like the gel completely and then the front the front spike like the oh front. oh i yeah. know so it's like swoop down and then up at the yeah. front yeah i Whoa. know the vibes oh my. i know I like exactly I like what... that guy oh never mind my hair's all thin but like <laughs> for a second i felt like i had that to do some stranger things so. oh yeah steve harrington yeah daddy you know yeah he's more of a mom though i think he's he's got mom he's energy mommy. for sure yeah yeah that's crazy. Oh my God. Wait, so wait, can I ask so Zach? So was what was the first sign of puberty for you? What was the first thing you noticed about your body or like, oh, the change is happening? Pubes. Pubes? Pubes. Okay. Pubes. What was the first mental thing? Like not physical. Like where you're like, I'm an adult. Like life's different now. Say pubes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> pubes. Now, um, Probably, 
probably the first time you jack off. After that, you're like, oh, I yeah. get it now. Like, <laughs> this is different. <laughs> Do I don't know if that this... moment. Do you remember that? I, re- <laughs> I, okay, well, okay, well, here's the thing. I was very, very late to the game. I rem- the first time I ever jizzed uh, was the weekend of my 14th birthday. That was the first time. Pretty late to the game. It's very late, and then I didn't start like masturbating until like a year later. Fourteen is like the first time I masturbated, and girls masturbate way later than guys do because they don't need Mm. like the physical release. And I think it's also like you guys when you go to the, I almost said the fountain, the urinal. (laughs) 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 You like have to hold your dick, and there's a moment where it's probably like, why don't I do this more often? This is something I could just do from (laughs) now on. Just holding my dick, just like, oh, this this feels nice in my hand. This, but we don't necessarily do that. So I feel like the first time I masturbated, it was very like unconscious to me. I was like, what am I doing necessarily? Well, I don't know, but it's all happening. Yeah, yeah. I remember like kids talking about on the bus and just being like, what happened? Like, what do you mean? Like, why do you do that? Like, I don't get it. And then there's like one time where I was like, okay, like, I guess I gotta try it. And I was like in the shower, and I was just like like 12 13 maybe and i was like i just mm-hmm. don't get it like what is happening like i don't it's like i know i'm supposed to but like what is the point and then all of a sudden i just got tunnel vision and started like like, like i stopped hearing things and like i went like my vision went blank and i started like shaking and i was like whoa, oh, no. whoa. <laughs> oh my god it's like first... just blood was rushing out of your head so fast that yeah, you were like it was my first come wow first come. and i was just, wait like, Oh, I see now. <laughs> Wait, Gabby, have I told you what my first ever, the first time I came, what, what that was like? You haven't. And you know what? Oh, I my feel God. robbed of hearing it. What, so it was, so the weekend of my 14th birthday, like I had friends come over for like a big sleepover party. It was um over the weekend. And I had a friend who just like, he, he kept showing us this thing called meat spin, which was when <gasps> like, I know about remember it. meat spin. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, like it would be a gif. It would be a gif of like it was two guys fucking. It was a close up of just like of like one dick going in the next dude's ass, and then the next dude, his dick was just spinning in a circle with each thrust like that. And it was that was me. And then he would show us like Pornhub, and it was like, but it was all redirected to meat spin, and that was his prank. Is like you think you'd be looking at something? No, no, it's meat spin again. But he had, at some point he had shown what Pornhub was, and then after they all went home for some reason, I was at home alone. And I was just like, I'll go on Pornhub again. And then I, I, I didn't, I couldn't think of any word besides sex that I actually knew besides the word scissor. So I looked up scissor <laughs> in the search bar and I found a video. It feels like nice in l- cop videos when, or like, um, like cop movies when like a guy gets caught and they're like, what's your name, sir? And they like, look at the guy's badge and they're like, John Badge. <laughs> you were like, I feel like you saw a scissor in your house and you were like, scissor. I, I saw it in South Park. And that was, oh, that was the, that's, yeah, that's, that classic. was the thing. That's the way. That, and that's the reason why the word was in my head. I was like, well, that's a good, that's as good a word as any to look up. And so I did. And, I, <laughs> and so I looked it up. I found a video. I started watching it. I was just standing, just fully clothed. <laughs> and I was just watching that. And I just came in my pants. Oh, you know what? You did tell me about this. Why didn't I, did, I remember? Yeah. It's very re- remarkable. <laughs> story. I shouldn't have forgotten. But yeah, Zach. So that's what, and then literally when I went to the bathroom and I like cleaned myself up, my first thought was, oh, it's good to know that the pipes are working. Yeah, so I, exactly. I thought I was like broken. I was like, I don't yeah. know. Like I don't know. Do, were you ever like afraid that it was never gonna happen to you? Yeah. And that you were gonna be like the one person that like hormonally something was off and so I was so afraid of that Same. because I had seen like I'd seen trailers for this documentary on BBC America for this dude who was like thirty years old but never went through puberty. Oh, and I know said, about that. The yeah. man child. Oh, it's so sad. It was so, and I saw the. I was like maybe ten or something. I was like, I hope. That's not me. I was so scared. I was so, so scared. And so the first time I came, I was just like, oh, I can relax now. Oh, you know what? Being a cis really guy actually sweet. sounds like it sucks. I know you guys have all the privileges, but you also have to worry that maybe your cum just doesn't work. And that's terrible. Yeah. yeah. If our cum it's doesn't scary. work, nothing, hap- no, nothing happens. No one. Yeah. 
there's no baby that doesn't get made necessarily. You know? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure on the the male cum. There's a lot of there's a lot the of the male right cum. <laughs> the male cum. You sound like a chain letter. Have you tried the male cum? <laughs> Has the male come to your house? <laughs> You've heard about the male gaze. <laughs> the male... <laughs> You've heard about the male ego. <laughs> Now it's time for the male cum. His his lesser known sibling, the male cum. <laughs> no, I definitely felt very relieved when after the first one. Mm-hmm. So guilty. Mm. Really? Did you not have guilt? I oh, oh I'll tell you when I did I have so guilt. much shame. And like after every yeah. time I would jack off, like the first like year, I'm like, okay, never again, never again. <laughs> never doing this again. Yeah. How long did that last each time? Was it just like it one day? Progressively or... smaller every. Yeah. I remember when I was 10 years old, I Googled just like naked women on Google. And then I immediately sh- like closed the window as soon as I got the first like glimpse of a, t- of a boob. And then I remember I was in the car with my mom one time and I just like broke down crying, confessing that I had Googled naked women. And she was just like, it's fine. <laughs> like she was, she was oh, totally no. cool. <laughs> Your poor mother in the car, like, oh, I have other things to deal with. Don't confess no. this to me right now. So funny. <laughs> yeah, the one I got, I think I got caught watching porn when I was like seventeen. Ooh, oh my god! No. I've never been caught. Oh, I didn't get like caught like firsthand, but like I you got secondhand delete. caught, like secondhand yeah. smoke. Yeah, didn't didn't delete the history. Oh, oh. that is the secondhand caught. Oh. Yeah. And it was not fun. It was not oh. fun. Um, oh I have God. to say, I've ne- I like I've watched porn a couple of times, but it just doesn't pique my interest. And I hate talking about that because everyone thinks I'm lying. But I genuinely cannot get into it. I use my imagination. Oh. Usually, imagination is better. Yeah. What usually ends up happening for me, yeah. happening for me, if I watch porn, is like I watch like the first like like I watch it for like thirty seconds and then end up going to imagination. Mm, I really, see. it like gets it going and then I'm like, okay, like. So it's like the inspiration. It's like you're meditating to create art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so it. That's so interesting because like I have like occasionally masturbated to so like my own thoughts or just but it's almost always just i need to like see something it's mm. almost always it's like, like I think with I that stimulus like get it going and then but no i'm i have a good imagination it's a good time that you have a I'm, favorite like scenario or like uh you know just just be Ooh. sitting on my face you know <laughs> <laughs> for a minute i was like <laughs> you sitting on your face <laughs> i mean <laughs> preferably I just, I just jack off to the thought of another me coming. <laughs> so wait, wait, would would a, would a lady be sitting on your face while you're also jacking off? So you're like, you're jacking off, but just to the thought of someone sitting on your face? Yeah, but like, it's my imagination. So someone could be sitting on my face and like two other people could be like sucking my dick. And it's like, yeah, for yeah. sure. Like, <laughs> I was yeah, wondering how me. that fantasy worked because like, you know, it seems difficult to share. It's like, does one person take the left side and one ter- person take the right side, or do they just? I think. Turn? I think in my big... imagination, they know exactly what to do. <laughs> no, I think oh, a there big are part highly of it... competent women feminists. I think a, I think a big part of it for like a lot of people is just like is just enjoying them compete over like, no, I want it, no, I want it. You oh know? my god, male <laughs> fantasy. Imagine? Like if that happened to me in real life, I'd be like, guys, stop. <laughs> Like I'd be like really concerned. Like <laughs> male fantasies they're... are so funny. Like no, it's my turn. I want it. <laughs> Sandra, you always get to suck the dick. Then in like reality, when like fantasies, like when like things, I'd be like that would be like really hot, and they happen in person. You're like, <laughs> and you're like, this is not hot at all. This is this is a logistical nightmare. <laughs> Like even like sometimes like dirty talk, like I remember like oh yeah, like one girl told me she's like I want you to use me as your little fuck toy and I'm like no, 
No, I'm going to treat you like a woman and read you books and <laughs> comb your hair. <laughs> I will not use you as a fuck toy. God damn it. It like puts so much pressure on. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but you're a human. Can we start there? <laughs> I want you to use me like a little human. <laughs> With your own sexual urges and longings. Tell me, I, tell me, I have agency. Do it. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, On that no. amazing note, should we get into listener submissions? Indeed, let's do it. All right. So, Zach, this is basically the part where. You know, we can give advice, we can just comment on it, but people write in, we say what we think. So I'm going to start with one of my favorite one that's ever been submitted. Um, someone wrote, I tell people that I've been to Disneyland and didn't like it, which is a lie. I've never been. It's definitely, however, a shorter conversation than explaining that I'm terrified of people in full body costumes. Mickey Mouse, no thank you. My family couldn't go to Chuck E. Cheese because I would scream the whole time. Wow. I'm convinced that if I can't see their eyes, they want to kill me. I didn't even go to games in high school because I didn't trust the mascot. Is it weird? I totally get it. No, I also get it. I understand. I totally get it. This I think she's lying. Ooh. This <laughs> just is to get a, just to get on the pod. Take. Hmm. Like, grow up. Like, just avoid that. <laughs> like, like, I get it. When you went to Chuck E. Cheese when you were five, like, it was scary. Like, Santa Claus was scary when I was five and had to sit on his lap. But, like, stop. <laughs> I don't want to just gloss over the detail that Santa Claus was scary to you when you had to sit mm. on his lap. No, but have you never, like, I feel like No, I've sat on never, Santa's lap. And I've never sat on Santa's lap. I feel like everyone has had, like, a picture. Like, I've seen, like, so many people like some people's like pictures of like them crying on Santa's lap when they're a baby. I have seen those. Yeah, I have seen those. You know, and like like obviously like big big a big Chuck E. Cheese mouse would be scary as a kid, but I feel like it's one of those things. Like I used to pretend to be afraid of clowns because I thought like like I was like afraid of them for like when I was like little, and then like no, it's still a fear. And then I was like, no, it's not. You know, mm-hmm. I think like go to Disneyland. Yeah. yeah, don't deprive yourself. And also, all I want to say about this is that they should have a feature at Chuck E. Cheese where you sit on Chuck E. Cheese's lap. <laughs> they should. That's great. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but instead of uh, asking, they uh, they just take your Christmas presents from the previous year. That's what they do. They just like room. <laughs> it's just purely negative. You get nothing. <laughs> I don't know why I really like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just going to be really mean to all this. All these. <laughs> no, we, we love that. And you know what? I bet oh, they yeah. love it too. Tough luck. I have, I have one that I think you would love that this would be great for me. Uh, like many mothers, mine is problematic slash has no boundaries slash is way too interested in the state of my adult acne. Uh, finally, considering she is the way... She is because maybe my grandmother was actually a huge cunt. She died three years ago. When we visited her on her hospital deathbed, we had to wear these yellow hospital gowns. The last thing I remember her saying to me was, yellow is not a good color on you. Ooh. Yeah, your mom's got some trauma. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. What's the, this is- is this just, it was just like a statement. Yeah, so it's basically just like her describing how her mom is kind of just all up in her business all the time and very needly at certain things. But it also seems like you can totally see where the cycle has yeah, begun. Totally. Also, I think that's just the thing with moms. Like, like my yeah. mom tells me to take yeah. a bath. Like, I mean, like <laughs> you stink. And I'm like, I'm depressed. <laughs> <laughs> um. But Way did you too... not go? I mean, I also stink. Did, did, no, did you not just tell you? Yeah. Way too interested in the state of adult acne. Yeah, I mean, that's like, adult acne does sometimes come from somewhere. I don't want to blame this person for their own acne because it's very possible that it's legitimate. Uh, uh, sometimes As acne comes from- As opposed to illegitimate from... acne, the kind that you just plaster on. Very possible he is a fake mole or she or they. <laughs> yeah, quit faking your acne. <laughs> Yeah. Stop, stop doing it for the clout. <laughs> All right. So we've determined you're faking your acne for the clout. No, I'm I don't yeah. know. I think 
having a mother with no boundaries is just you're you one you're probably jewish i say that as a jew <laughs> and number two like you know you gotta love her for all her flaws because i think mothers are some of the most flawed yeah. people on earth and you just have to love them because why not it's i think it's very also it's very healthy to look at also what her mom was like and understand like sort of like see them as a whole person and not as like someone who should be perfect and hopefully one day forgive them for understanding that they're probably doing their best, even though it's not as much as you'd like. And the fact that you're pointing it out too is a good, that's a good sign that you're acknowledging mm -hmm. that she doesn't have boundaries and you're not taking it out on yourself rather than yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. my mom Smart. and I'm noticing Very good. her grandma, her mom was probably a little bit like this. And now when you have a child, if you have a child, cause you know, your adult acne, um, <laughs> Sorry. When uh, you raise your little acne. <laughs> <laughs> when you have baby acne, you won't <laughs> talk about it with them. And then maybe, no, I don't know. You're fine. Grow the cycle up. will be broken. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> but every turn, you're just like, grow up. You're going to like saying grow up to this one. <laughs> oh, well. like, I'm telling all these people to grow up as a 25 year old who doesn't know how to do his taxes, doesn't have a job. <laughs> like, <laughs> Let's be honest. We're it's on a podcast right now. None yeah. of us know. My, I'm literally in my childhood bedroom. <laughs> Grow up. Grow up. The people on this podcast. Are I mean, I'm in, my, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in my childhood home as well. I. I don't. I can't get, school anyone on housing. I have no knowledge. Yo, do you live with your parents? No, no, they don't. They don't live here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I took it over. You need a roommate? Ooh. No. <laughs> Fine. I, I had I one for I had for a for a while, but it didn't work out. It's it's okay. I I have a place. <laughs> I have like a thousand stuffed animals in this room, even though it's not my childhood. It's so. <laughs> Jasmine's so scary. It's it's so it's so odd to see it like get flagged out by the background. The mirror cats. Nice mask. Yeah, the mirror the mirror cats. That Thanks. is a good mask from Old Navy. Old Navy sells masks. Fuck sponsor? Yeah. No, it's not a sponsor. <laughs> Old Navy, please sponsor us if you're listening. Um, let's yeah. do one more and then go into the the perception. Yes, let's do it. Let's <laughs> which do is the it. new yeah. name for self perception corner. Okay, this is a crazy love story that's only oh, applicable I like to this. kids today. Because of COVID, my school split up the students based on last names. So half of the alphabet goes to school for the first half of the week, and the other half goes the other half of the week. This is but already I so romantic. I know. <laughs> But I have a crush on a friend who is in the first half of the alphabet. How should I go about this? We are part of the same drama department and we work fairly close, uh, work and act fairly close to one another within the department. So I assume, I guess they're in the same drama department, but they don't go to school at the same time anymore. They're star crossed yeah. lovers in different alphabets. Okay, even though we live in this day and age with uh, texting and telecommunications the way it is, I really like the idea of you like passing letters to friends. And so like, there's like friends within that name group, and they'll pass it to your to your crush, and then you sort of like have like a chain of uh, oh, communication. Yeah. I really like I like letter giving. I think or that's go really old cute. school and use the phone book. Oh. Be like, that's, I'm that's calling kinky. you from the phone book because you're in the other half of the class and mm. we need to talk. I have heard some really interesting things about like kids who don't know what their teacher's lower half of their faces look like. Whoa. Because they've only ever seen them like in a mask. Like Kevin Burke, who's another comedian, like had that happen. And then when he went remote onto Zoom, his students were like, oh my God, you look like that? Like you just look like a person oh. with a chin. Which is yeah, so fucking that crazy is to me. So strange. Imagine having your crush and you're like desperate to see what their face looks like. Well, there was I remember there was a recent episode of SNL where they were like there was a whole like music video they did about just like getting to the space where you, getting to the point where you could see what the lower half of their face looks like that that was like really hidden and sexy and shit oh i like that like that was just a whole new like tier of dating like you know like the bases of like baseball but there's like a whole just like <laughs> now it's just see what the bottom of their face looks like <laughs> no mask base <laughs> yeah no mask base that could be shortstop i think 
yeah wow i'm just i think you're right about the letters though i think i think he needs to write a little note Mm. Yeah. Oh, no. I, lo- I love I love the idea of letters. I like that sort of like Victorian era, just like lo- I lo- I like the idea of love letters a lot. Did you do you have any idea of how um how they can uh achieve a romance separated like this? I mean, wait, is it known that the other person likes them back or no? It's not known. Mm. Well, the only way is to ask. That's mm. true. That the is only, the only where way. the letters come into play. The only this way is, is where... to ask. So True. the letter has to be pretty darn romantic, or else you're fucked. Yeah. But also, like, if it's rom, if sometimes I feel like, I feel like that could kill it too. I don't know. You know, if someone's like super romantic towards you, and you know, like, it could be like take you aback. It could, but. It's also that people are sort of starved for connection and communication. So I think it, I, so I think this is like a really cool um, new thing that could be done. I think that, cause like I would imagine like you're a kid. No, I, I feel so bad for like students right now because mm-hmm. they should be like socializing and mixing and doing all that. But imagine you receive this handwritten letter out of nowhere. And I would imagine even, even if I, one day was like not into this person initially i would be so interested yeah i'd be like what the fuck is this you know yeah i think you gotta write a little letter just expressing yeah your interest or a carrier pigeon Mm. yeah wait but what about like phones like why don't you just (laughs) (laughs) like no that's over (laughs) that's done no 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 No, we can't do that anymore (laughs) No more phones. Wi-Fi just... is canceled. We can't. Can... Do... No. Oh, what you can do is leave a letter at the school or at wherever the drama department. Maybe is. in their locker. Exter. Oh, yeah. that's something you could do. And you could just like... slide it into like a crack in the locker, because the locker will still be they there. Have, and then they when they lockers. get to school, they can. I don't know. You... I didn't have lockers in school. Oh, really? I had lock. I had a locker in high school. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. So if oh, you don't wow. have a locker, if you, if, if you leave the note somewhere where they know they'll find it, and then you can give them a text, be like, mm-hmm. "Hey, I left you something." Mm. Ooh. And then they don't know what's inside. That's yeah, yeah. I would like that a lot for sure. I think that would that I find and that you're really gonna hot, get actually. your answer. And here's the other good thing. Here's the other great thing about it. If they don't have the same feelings, you don't have to see them. <laughs> Yeah. That's such a good point. <laughs> Holy shit. It's like, it's like, this is actually a perfect situation for them. Yeah, there's that's way, true. There's a way to romantically express feelings in a really cute way. And the feelings aren't reciprocated. It's like, you don't have the embarrassment of having to like be in the same place as them every single day. Mm. So wait, did this person say how old they are? No, it's not said. I th- okay. But I would assume middle or high school. Yeah. But I was wondering if it was like the end of middle school or the end of high school that there is like less stakes. But if it's like the beginning or the middle, they're like, because, you know, think they might get back to more to normal in the next year or something. So, yeah. What if we left them a a note and in the note it was like the vaccine? (laughs) 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 Like, just come to our side of the class since you can't infect anyone. and Then we'll make out. (laughs) So romantic. (laughs) Always yes. leave someone the vaccine. That's that's what you can do. That's the lesson of this. Oh, and grow up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you grow yes. up. <laughs> you live in the age of iPhones. Fucking text them. Don't do letters. Don't waste paper. Don't be a little Think bitch. Polar bears. <laughs> what are you, Victorian? Shut up. <laughs> oh. Yeah, damn. Okay. Okay. So, Zach, so something we do at the end is sort of self-perception corner where we ask people, our guests, um, how they think they are perceived by others. And then we say how we actually perceive them. So would you please say how you believe you are perceived? Okay. Recently, I feel like I feel like a quarantine changed me for the worse. (laughs) Like, for sure. (laughs) Like, I was by myself for literally eight months of that. And then, like, I don't know what happened. I just became so mean. I feel like people think I'm, like, really arrogant and, like, kind of a prick. 
Mm. And like when I go to open mics, I feel like I'm better than everyone. And like a lot of times, it's like, like I feel like I come off as a annoying, like not annoying, but like just arrogant white kid. Mm. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, I think you're a sweetie, so I don't think so at all. Um, I think maybe you have like a hard veneer about you, but when you like under the surface is someone who just like really wants to like people and be liked. Uh, yes, but that's just sure. that's mm. just out of meeting you in these like you know 50 minutes and also seeing your set it felt like you have this like hard persona but then underneath it is a bunch of just like sweet dad jokes and I really ad- appreciated that about you um yeah and this just backs up my theory that I think that the thing everyone fears about themselves is always like the opposite thing that people actually perceive about them because they've like worked so hard not to be perceived that way that they're not yes, perceived that way for for sure yeah that's what i feel yeah i don't i don't know sometimes like i think it's more so like i'll find myself like like saying things I'm like why am i saying this like why am i trying to like like i think sometimes i come off as arrogant because sometimes like i'll talk about like i, I think being we talked about this a little bit Lucas, mm-hmm. like talking about like our accomplishments and like talking about like things we're proud of or yeah. like whatnot but like there comes to a point where sometimes it can be like you're always worried about like how do I like talk about you know your success like I don't you don't want to talk about your success all the time and I was like no talk about it like I love that shit like, I mean you say that now but he's always telling me he's like Gabby I'm so famous <laughs> dude, if I had a million followers okay Gabby I guess if you brought it up we can talk about it okay. <laughs> if I had a million followers on TikTok I would I would I would never shut up <laughs> I had I had eighty eight thousand followers you know you have more followers on instagram than like most successful comics if i had 88 followers i would never <laughs> shut up <laughs> <laughs> like i there would be a there would be a conceited aura about me <laughs> it was it was funny i remember maxim allen uh said lucas if i ha- he's like lucas if i had the amount of followers uh that you have i would it would go straight to my head. I was like, I cannot imagine you as an arrogant person. I cannot imagine you as like a gloating type. I, I couldn't. Mm. Can you picture Maxim Allen? Just, no. just like, he fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> just, uh, fuck yeah. off. I'm the big dick in this room. Like it would. Yeah. Just... It's yeah. <laughs> really, I don't think he would. I also <laughs> think I, would, I think it actually, I always think that like, I always have this like pre, I get so, oddly spiritual and like i feel like i can manifest a lot of things and i feel like i'm like manifesting i feel like i'm gonna make it and it's gonna be my downfall like that's what i think like i think like once i get like that like it's it not even will go to my head but like i'm an extremely self-conscious person mm-hmm. and like if one if i notice like one thing like like a thing person says about me like oh i'm like focusing on it or like you know like i think it could destroy me too I could see you wow. being self-conscious. That make because I see that I have that quality too. I'm very self-conscious and I recognize it. Um, and all I can say is that it's kind of better than the reverse because people who aren't self-conscious do stupid yeah. shit. And I don't want to see it and I don't yeah. care. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes it's, yeah. Like, yeah, you have like I will sometimes catch myself trying too hard. Like trying mm. too hard to act like I'm not self-conscious, which mm-hmm. makes me then more self-conscious. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, do other people think, do other yeah. people think I'm trying to do it? Like, do I see like, I feel like I try hard? Like, or like, oh, I feel like I'm like letting my true like feelings like like out too much, or I'm like oversharing, or like for sure. Yeah. So wait, so I rem- so in terms of like the way I first perceived you when I met you, is that when I first met you, you were very drunk. Always. Um, yeah, you were very, very drunk on our friend Lee's roof. And I just, th- that was all I could think. I just thought, all right, this person's drunk. I'm going to speak to people who are sober, I guess, and just for like, just it, just to have people to talk to. But then I saw you get on stage and do stand up. And I was just like, holy shit. I was just absolutely blown away. I was like, if that's how good he is drunk, I, I'm almost scared to see how good he is when he is sober. I was like, because you just, it, I was just like, oh, that's what raw talent is like. Because it just seemed like you were just, 
everyone always says like uh, with like good comedians is like oh it just seems like you're talking about wh whatever is on the top of your head and ever but you're like no it's actually really rehearsed and you work on it but with you i was like there's no way this is rehearsed this is too so, so you met me during a spiral but mm. also it was like a really good part of me learning comedy because i made it a thing from july to like essentially now still like when i do comedy like it's like almost like i'm putting myself on purpose in situations like i don't have a plan like i don't have notes mm. I, like i'll have like maybe wow. a, a keyword i'll like have like a joke i like one joke i want to work on or like two jokes and then everything else is just like like so you and, and that's, that's also drinking because it helped me like it helped mm. me do that <laughs> like yeah no I, it has helped me too i remember after um those mics on lee's roof we would then do like a second mic there was just hardly a mic it's just like seeing anything we wanted to try we did and i'd and if i had like a few drinks in me i would like feel a little bit less inhibited and then i tried stuff that i had never done before and they actually mm. did pretty so it definitely like unlocks you or gets you out of your head yeah. for me it's that for it me it's not like that work. i i feel like i get sloppy when i I try and do sets sober, and then after I do a set, I'm like, well, okay, maybe I'll have a beer or something. Like, right now, yeah, I'm be inspired by Zach, having a wine and a beer, mm -hmm. but, you know, not necessarily. Is that a lightning kugel? I it's... used to be terrified. Oh. Yeah, it is. Do you like this one? I've never had that, but I love the summer shandies that they do. Mm. It's the vanilla porter. It's delicious. I remember... When we were still like clinging on to the summer uh, on Lee's roof, I brought like um, uh, pumpkin summer shanties and they Ooh. weren't good. Oh no. <laughs> they were not good. Man, those that were the bad. days. Yeah, summer. But that uh, was an nice, yeah. But yeah, no, but, but with Zach, I, so I thought you were just like this just really rare diamond who could just like do stand up anywhere under any circumstances. And then like I got, to know you more and i was just like oh so he no he's very well prepared and he's a very deep person as well who like i could who was sober sometimes <laughs> i don't not yeah. say that i thought you were like drunk all the time but i remember no, no i literally was like i was literally spiraling and drinking all the time though mm. that's just yeah. the truth like i really was yeah. i was like just either drunk or high like 24 7 mm -hmm. oh, like, man. that's really what it was Goodness. Yeah. Um, what do you think no, got you out of that spiral um well i haven't i don't i think coming home helped for sure mm -hmm. so i've been home for like a month i haven't smoked anything for like a month or and i'm, I'm drinking now but i have like a beer or two mm -hmm. um you know i just get like i think at that point i was just like too emotional like i was just like getting like too too emotional and i was just have like tr like ptsd traumas that was, like were like stemming like coming up and mm -hmm. i was like ah oh, a drink and then like my i felt like my ego was going crazy where i was like it doesn't even matter i don't even give a shit like i'm the best comedian that ever lived like i used to do this joke where i would i'd be like i'd be like i I'd be like i fucking hate comedy like i don't even like it at all like the only reason i do it's because it's easy and i'm good like i hate when people say comedy is hard it's not hard you're just bad like if you want to like, <laughs> if, if, if you think it's hard just be better like that's what i did <laughs> like and like that's the that way to happened. piss everyone out of mic <laughs> yeah yeah it would get people so pissed and that made me even happier i'm like <laughs> that I, killed me so much it was so funny yeah and it was i'd even be like and if you're not laughing like it's i know so your funny. secret like way to out yourself like <laughs> like just like force la like force them to laugh it's not funny to be comedians all want too much and it's inherently unfunny to want <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Also, very fragile, very, very easily. Oh, I'm very, very fragile. I have people, such a sure. like, like you say, I could do comedy anywhere, but like, I like, I don't, I completely disagree. Like, I can, like, like, my thing is, I can easily crush, like, not easily, but like, I'm very confident. If it's like a crowd of like 50 people, or like, like, you know, I'm like, I'm gonna kill, like, it's, mm -hmm. it's fine, you know, but like, mics, mics terrify me. Like I'm like that's like that's where my fragility is around other comics because mm. I, I don't I know I can get the approval of regular people I I crave the approval of comics 
like that's mm. where like that's where my approval like like a need to like feel good like comes in like like i can't i can never i never do good at open mics and i quit half the time like there's so many times i went to lee's mic and i do like a minute and a half and like no one would respond in the same way that would they wouldn't respond to everyone else but i would take it like so personal and right. I'd be like, okay i'm done like goodbye and then just drink more <laughs> that's tough well it's because i think open mics yeah, are like true. you know no it's, it's you start it's using big... mic humor you start being like this is the humor that appeals to everyone at this open mic and it's actually not what appeals to a lot of audience members so it's like a hard yeah, balance no, not to strike all. yeah yeah and also like like i don't know about you sometimes i feel like mics like can be more detrimental than helpful i think they're also necessary like that mics are definitely necessary for mm-hmm. sure but like there have been so many times where mics have made me doubt jokes that like then I finally give them a chance on stage and I'm like, oh, like why was I doubting myself? Like, yeah, I know that that is so true because there there are times where you like get a little laugh. Um, like let's say you like you work out like a good set that you're very confident in every little bit, but and even if it does reasonably well, there's a chance that it'll do so extraordinarily well in a regular audience. Cause you're like, oh wait, this is what it's like to hear it for the first time. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, this is. And then you realize the p- power of what you've written actually yeah. unleashed on regular people. It's yeah, it's oh. a big yeah. ego boost for sure. It's such a good feeling. And but... then you also realize that the yeah. world isn't just New York comedians, and you go to a normal stage, and you're like, well, Jesus Christ, like this bit about this specific street in New York didn't work. You know, back to the drawing board. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah 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 for sure wait like, not I, everyone knows what staten island is like <laughs> yeah i definitely think new york comics definitely get to like, not all of them but like they get too into like new yeah. york yeah we're sure. very spoiled in the city we're very spoiled because we it's there's just so much in the city that you think oh there's there's nothing else. everyone knows this place ever it's 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 kind of what i think like america feels about themselves versus the rest of the country is like everyone wants to be america and people are like nope we don't <laughs> and <laughs> new york is america and i do think yeah new york <laughs> new york america is the new is the new york of the world <laughs> and we're all doing a coup on the empire state building <laughs> Am I right? It's coup week. Well, I think we'll end it there. Zach, do you have anything to promote yes. or plug? Yes, please plug and promote anything you like. <laughs> you think I'm up to things, dude? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can use you, social I have, media. I have an Instagram, just Zach comedy. Um, um, I posted a picture of my mustache on there the other day. That, oh, fuck. Uh, yeah. Oh. Let me go like it. Oh, wait, no, oh, it was sweet. a story. It was a story. Oh, I'm God sorry. Damn it. damn it, Zach. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go like your most recent thing cool. anyway, whatever it was. Cool. Yeah. Sick. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, <I'm not> like... <laughs> you're so sweet, dude. <laughs> you're no, such I'm a gem. <laughs> <laughs> For those listening, Zach has a mask on his head. And and he was wrapping it around his ears like like a helmet yarmulke combo. Yeah, I always do weird things with my mask, and then. That's yeah, not how you wear you it in public. Whoa! It actually it actually looks like a like a nice hat. <laughs> <laughs> well, if this isn't motivation to check us out on YouTube, I don't know what is. Yeah. Um, Oh, also, this is the cover photo. This. For those who made it oh, to yeah. the end of the episode, we we made a new form. So if you guys want to write in any more gossip yes. on your life, um, that is yeah. on our link tree. It's gonna be on Instagram. Luke is gonna talk about it on TikTok. And uh, please yes. keep writing it because we love you. And thank you, Zach. We love you too. No, thank you, guys. Thank you so much for coming on, Zach. <laughs>